Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, um, it's, a, it's kind of an Ask Judy. Uh, it's kind of about bloopers. Um, so hopefully you will enjoy this. I get asked a lot about bloopers on the Waltons and I wish I had more of the actual bloopers to show you. I think there are some available on, on YouTube. I don't have any of them. I never had the blooper reels. Uh, sometimes they were just inside things, so they might not even really be all that funny to someone who wasn't there, but they were funny to us. Some, sometimes they were just like someone messing up a line over and over and over again. And, you know, the, it could be, again, funny if you were there. Uh, but I do, I thought I'd share a few bloopers from my time on stage. Definitely some things happened to me over the years doing theater. Starting early on, I worked with a, with a theater company when I was young, and at times, besides acting in shows, I would sometimes help with other things. And I was, I was helping with props on one show. And in this kind of basically blackout, it's pretty dark when you have to go on to the stage to clear things or do things between scenes. So it was pretty dark out there. I was supposed to clear things off this table from, you know, like plates and silverware and stuff. And I got things and I dropped a fork. And I thought, oh goodness. So I'm like down on my hands and knees and I'm trying to find this fork. And I took too long and the lights came up for the scene. And there I am on my hands and knees on the stage. I'm not supposed to be on the stage. And I crawled. I just very quickly like crawled off the set, almost like, oh, well, if I crawl off fast, nobody will see me. So that was pretty embarrassing. Then with the same theater company, there was a time I was in the show. And this wasn't really so much a blooper, but it was, you know, something that happened. So this was a um, very small theater and there was no curtain at the beginning of the show. And the first character, it's supposed to be like awake. There's a coffin open on stage. And at the beginning of the show, someone comes in and, you know, does something and then leaves. And then this actor comes up out of the coffin. So he's been lying in there since they opened the house and started letting the audience in. He has a long monologue and then I'm the next one to enter. I'm playing his daughter. Yeah, I was probably, I don't know, 11, 12 at the time. And I knew when I did theater as a child, I knew everybody's lines. I could have recited that show from beginning to end. So he, and this, I didn't realize this actor drank. So I think when he was in there, he might have been a little tipsy in there. So he comes out one night. I'm standing in the wings waiting to make an entrance. And he comes out and he starts talking. And I know immediately that he has forgotten his lines. He's making stuff up. He's rambling around. And um, so I'm thinking, oh, shoot, you know, what's going to happen here? Because there's nobody else on stage to help cue him. There was um, a phone between the the sound and light booth out front and backstage. So somebody, you know, buzzed backstage and somebody, when the cast picked up the phone and they said, and the director said, send Judy out. So I guess they figured they'd send me out and I could help, you know, move the show forward. Just about the time that they were going to send me out, I heard that the actor started actually saying his lines. So in with all my, you know, 11, 12 year old wisdom, I thought, hmm, you know, I know how I can, you know, it's like I could, I could imagine how upsetting and, you know, it, it would make you to, to, how panicked you could be not remembering your lines. And I thought, well, if he's now on track, if I go out there, it could throw him off totally again. So I thought to myself, I'm going to see how it goes. If he stays on track, and he's remembering his lines, then I will make my entrance where I'm supposed to. If he messes up again, I'll go out. So they're trying to go, go out, go out, go out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So they thought it was because I was afraid to go out. Um, they, you know, because I didn't have time in just barely off stage to whisper all of my thought process. So I waited. He stayed on track. I made my entrance. We did all of act one. And then at intermission, the director came backstage and he was like, I mean, he was a good guy, so it wasn't like he was really mad at me, but he was like, why didn't you go on? So I explained this whole thing to him, and he was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> so I appreciated that he gave me credit for that. That was another one that was a little a little harrowing. Um, I, was, I, was on, I was doing a production of I Ought to Be in Pictures, and the actor that I was working with, he would, he would forget lines sometimes, and we had somebody who was like prompting offstage. This person 
uh, was there, you know, if something really happened. And at one point we were in act one and he was an actor who remembered a lot of his lines based on where he was standing. So he associated his movement with his lines. And there was a point in act one where we were standing in the same position as a point in act three. And all of a sudden he started doing the dialogue from act three. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> we can't jump to act three. <laughs> so I literally like, kind of took him, I'm like, and he was playing my father. I'm like, dad, you know, I really think you ought to go just, just go relax for a few minutes. And I literally walked him off stage so that he could get prompted and corrected about where we were. And I just kind of killed some time on stage. And then he came back and I was like, you know, there's something else I wanted to talk to you about. And we were back on track. So that's the wonderful thing about theater is that you do have to cover for each other when things like that happen. Um, and things, you know, things do happen. I have been hit in the face. You know, I got hit by a dancer one time in Any Get Your Gun and I was sitting on the floor, you know, while this dance went on and somebody came by and swung an arm and bashed me in the eye. Um, you know, you just keep going, my eyes totally watering and running. Um, I was doing a production of Cinderella and there was a fireplace and, you know, because of the magic involved, the fairy godmother, there was a point where I was supposed to go over to start a fire in the fireplace to make her a cup of tea or something. And as I got close to the fire, like it was supposed to sort of light. Well, they put too much in one night and it sort of exploded in my face. Little things, not seriously, but like stuff flew out in my eyes. So again, it's like my eyes are watering and um, and I was like, okay, that was like a little potentially dangerous. Another night during that show, there was this big, huge wooden pumpkin. So when things are supposed to change from the pumpkin to the carriage, uh, there was this pumpkin I was supposed to hold. And then when she does her magic, they fly it out and this carriage comes down. Well, one night for, I don't know what was going on. I don't know. Uh, but the pumpkin got pulled up to a point where it was like directly in front of my face. And I'm singing a song and it's so wide that there's no way to get around it or under it. So I stood back there singing my song <laughs> hidden completely by this pumpkin. Um, you know, I just didn't, I didn't know what else to do. It was too, I couldn't pull it back down and it couldn't, I couldn't move it. So, you know, those types of things happen. Um, the other, uh, I worked um, with another actor one time where, we and he liked to, he thought it was, um, he thought the audience enjoyed when you broke the fourth wall. So the fourth wall being where the audience is. And he thought mistakes and stuff that it made the audience feel like they, something special happened. They were there. Oh, I was there when this happened. So he would, he would, different things would happen. Like he was supposed to come in with wood one time and put it in the fireplace and he came in and he dropped it and, and stuff. And he's like, I'm just going to do that again. And so I picked it all up and he left and he, came back in and did it again. Uh, so he would do things like that. There was one night when there was a scene that got missed. He just skipped over it. He, you know, inadvertently, he didn't know. And at some point off stage or in inter intermission, something came up about, oh yeah, we, you know, we missed that scene. He's like, oh really? So when we came out for the curtain call, he said to the audience, you know, there was a scene that you didn't get to see and we're going to redo it now. And the rest of us as actors are like, Oh my gosh, what's going on? So he made us do the scene again at the curtain call. This one was just, you know, always stands out. It's kind of one of the ones that, that totally cracked us all up because sometimes you're trying not to crack up on stage, but this one, there was no way around. I was doing a production of Social Security and there's a point where um, the character who's playing my husband and I uh, start, you know, we, we duck down behind a sofa and clothes are supposed to like be flying and stuff like that. Like we're going to go back there and fool around. And then my, I think it's my sister and her husband enter. And, and so like, you know, we pop up and stuff. And, and then at one point there is, um, the actor who was playing my husband is supposed to like throw, um, my, um, throw me something. Well, anyway, some, my underwear or what, my pretend pants, shorts, whatever. I was still dressed back there, but um, it was whatever my little shorts were, uh, were thrown and, and, and the actor missed catching it to give to me and it went into the audience. So it lands, this was a dinner theater, lands on, on someone's table and 
you know, so they had to literally go over and go, um, can I have that back? So that one was, and we were all just completely cracked up and it took us a bit to kind of pull it back together, but it was a comedy. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't like we cracked up in the middle of some big tragic scene. Uh, so those were some sharing a few of mine on stage or doing theater bloopers. So hope you enjoyed that. So that's what I have for you on this special edition of a, an Ask Judy about bloopers and particularly about some of my onstage theater experiences with bloopers. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.